Defender Strange, Hero Strange, Sinister Strange, and Dead Strange. Marvel Studios' Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness shows us new sides of our favorite sorcerer. So to break it all down, we're talking with Marvel Studios' Visual Development Supervisor, Ian Joyner. Hiya, Ian. Hello, Ryan. All right, so in this film, we meet several versions of Doctor Strange, and they all kind of embody different aspects of the character. How did you approach designing these different Stranges? So beginning to develop the different looks for Doctor Strange was a really interesting challenge. We got to see what does he look like when egos run amok? What does he look like when the, the dark power is taken over? All the way to what does he look like as a shambling corpse? We were very lucky and very blessed that we have years and years of comic books to go back to. So we were all able to go and see which looks we thought were the strongest, which looks were the most interesting, and pull from that and then infuse some of the design work that was done in the first film and make sure that it all kind of gelled together and felt cohesive, yet unique and interesting in its own way. So of course we start off the film not with the Doctor Strange that we know and love, but with the very cool Defender Strange. Where did you start with developing this new look? With Defender Strange, some of the biggest asks were to make sure that this character felt like a brand new version of Doctor Strange. So we knew we had to avoid a lot of the things that have become iconic about the character, yet still instantly recognize him as Doctor Strange. Again, we were lucky because we had years and years of comic book reference. We knew we wanted to lean into this swashbuckling aspect of the character. Things like removing the cape and making sure that he had a lot of mobility was important, but still having some of that secondary emotion like the sashes and things like that. One of the other iteration points was, does every Strange have an eye of Agamotto? We explored yes, no, different takes, would there be different realities that are different versions of the eye? Ultimately deciding that it made the most sense for just our hero Strange to be the one who carried the eye. Yeah, so speaking of our main hero Strange, he has a slightly new look from the last time we saw him. How did you approach his design on this film? One of the key design elements of Doctor Strange is avoiding the typical superhero look. You don't want him to just feel like he's wearing tights when he's fighting or conjuring or doing whatever he needs to do. The look of the core Strange is very similar to the, the last time we saw him, but as you start to look a little closer, the suit fits a little tighter. He's a little bit more heroic in proportion. Everything down to the way that the Eye of Agamotto is sitting a little bit higher, which we kind of pulled in to be a little bit of a reference to the comic book look. Yeah, and oh, of course, we also see that the Cloak of Levitation gets a new look in this film. How did you guys approach the very important challenge of repairing Cloak? Cloak is such an important character in the Doctor Strange mythos. And when Cloak gets damaged, it's heart-wrenching. You know, this is a character we've known for years and years now. One of the thoughts was to look at what the Strange of that universe would have and bring that into the design of how to patch Cloak up and get him battle-ready again. So pulling in that blue patch is almost a little memory and a little memento of uh, some of the adventures he was going on. So later on and across the multiverse, we meet Sinister Strange. What was your approach in designing this corrupted version of Doctor Strange? In developing Sinister Strange, we knew he had to be as recognizable as our hero Strange as possible, but with an edge. Things just got out of hand. So taking the initial costume designed by Carlo Ortiz and adding a little bit of a, a dark, sinister edge to it was a really interesting and fun challenge. The simplest thing to do was to sharpen lines, to add more texture, to add more weathering. We also added a kind of leather backing on top of the shoulders to add a little bit more of a imposing stance on him. While we kept developing him, the idea came up for the third eye to come out. The question was, how organic do we go? So we developed everything from kind of a bulging area in the forehead that would be instantly noticeable, all the way to it just magically appearing. What ultimately seemed to be the best way to go is that you wouldn't really notice it until it pops open and gives a nice scare. And speaking of a nice scare, I know I got one and many others did as well. The first time we saw it, Dead Strange. Super cool look, by the way. Walk us through it. What was it like bringing this design to life, as it were? First and foremost, when you're working on a Sam Raimi film, you have to hope at one point you get to make some form of zombie. One of the really fun parts about making Dead Strange was how do we show that this gruesome character can be scary. How can we show this gruesome character can also be heroic? So we did a lot of iterations, everything from missing eyeballs to clouded over eyeballs to parts of his jaw being missing, all sorts of horrific things. Ultimately, we knew we still needed him to be relatable and somewhat heroic in the end. We were developing the look of the shadowy beings that were pulling Strange back to the realm of the dead. A fun idea came up that not only were these things happen, but that Doctor Strange would be able to control them 
what is a Doctor Strange without cloak, right? So to then use those things and turn into this crazy, demonic, monster cloak was such a fun challenge to undertake. All right, as fans now get to go back and rewatch the film a whole bunch of times, what do you hope audiences take away from seeing these different versions, these different sides of the character? I hope audiences react to these different Doctor Stranges the way that I felt when we got to start working on them. Excited to see how different they all are, and yet interested to see how similar they could be. To take one too far would be to break the character, but to push him just to the edge of something new was something that was really, really exciting to, to work on. Well, Ian, as a fan, I can't say enough how much I loved all the work that you and the team put into making this film and designing these Doctor Stranges, bringing them to life. And also, thanks for chatting with us. Everybody else out there watching, please go enjoy all the multiversal moments as you go and rewatch Marvel Studios' Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, now streaming on Disney+. Thank you.